Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with Ask Dave episode 239. Today we look at the receiver side of software-defined radios, specifically the brand new RSP-DX model from SDR Play. You may have heard or read about attaching an inexpensive dongle to your PC or Mac. The dongle interprets RF signals and turns them into something your PC can then turn into a radio. Some of these dongles are very inexpensive, such as this one. But, as another example of getting what you pay for, the $10 and $15 dongles don't really do a good job. There are more expensive USB-connected black boxes that can do some pretty amazing things. The SDR Play series of receivers, even though they look like black boxes and are attached to your PC via USB, can provide truly amazing performance, rivaling even expensive ham radio transceivers. It must be remembered that these are only receivers, or as SDR Play calls them, radio signal processors. There are three radio signal processors, or RSPs, in the SDR Play line. I have all three of them in front of me. They have a lot in common. They all attached to your PC using a simple USB cable. They all draw power from your PC through the USB cable. And they all use the same SDR Play house brand software called SDR Uno. The latest version of SDR Uno, updated for the new RSPDX, is version 1.33. Note that this version does not change anything for their previous receivers, so version 1.33 is a drop-in replacement. If I can just interject something very quickly here, be sure to subscribe. This helps tell YouTube that this is a channel worth watching. A very common use case for these receivers is to create a highly detailed pan adapter on your computer screen. I've had my little SDR Play RSP1A for quite a while now, and it does a pretty much permanent pan adapter duty. In fact, all three radios in this series do an excellent job in pan adapter duty. I want to talk a little bit about what happens in the black box versus what happens in your computer. The black box is the RF front end. SDR Play uses the latest analog to digital converters and the latest processing chips to get high grade receiver performance and interface with the PC. In today's terms, the software that goes in your PC does not need a top-of-the-line PC, and you will likely be able to use it with your existing PC. I should mention that when I say PC, I mean Windows. The house brand software runs only on a Windows PC. I personally recommend using the house brand software because it allows you to access all features of all versions of the hardware. However, I will note in passing that the learning curve for the software can be steep, and if you prefer different SDR software from previous experience, there are versions of other software available via the SDR Play website that you can use. The PC takes the output of the hardware front end and does all of the processing necessary to create the spectrum display, the waterfall, control the front end, and can create one or more so-called receivers that will each select a signal for demodulation. It is possible to select multiple signals for demodulation at the same time. Now, before we dig into the features of the new RSPDX receiver, let's see if you're in the market for this. I have long used my SDR Play RSP1A as a standard part of my station in pan adapter and general coverage shortwave listening duty. I have a wideband HF receive antenna, the MFJ1886, which I reviewed in Ask Dave episode 67. Also, 
my Yaesu FTDX3000 transceiver has an RF output that is a buffered version of what the antenna hears on the band I'm operating. I almost always turn on the SDR play receiver and watch the entire band on my PC, which provides a much better band scope than the one on the Yaesu display. And other times when I'm just curious about something, I'll turn on the MFJ1886 antenna, which uses a small power supply, and just go into shortwave listening mode. As soon as I received the RSPDX, I upgraded the software to 1.33 and put in the RSPDX where the RSP1A was. It proved to be a drop-in replacement. There are minor differences in the software because the RSP1A has only one antenna connection where the RSPDX has three selectable antenna inputs. What is the market for the SDR play receivers? These are, after all, very thoroughly developed and very capable software-defined radio hardware front ends. The market includes many different people. Hams are quite interested in these because they offer a spectacularly good spectrum and waterfall display of entire ham bands in HF and VHF and wide segments of bands above that well into the microwave region, as well as the ability to select specific signals to receive. You can pick a specific signal to send through a receiver that will demodulate the signal, apply filtering, apply noise reduction, and so on. Once you get used to the spectrum and waterfall display, you won't want to go back. Of course, the same features make the devices attractive to shortwave listeners. In fact, the major HF shortwave bands are available at the click of a button. Experimenters and makers can use these receivers as a poor man's spectrum analyzer to look at the performance of projects under development. Also, although your best performance is available through the house software called SDR Uno, the output is available in the form of I and Q signals and standard control commands that allow it to be used by a variety of popular software-defined radio packages. If you want to experiment with new algorithms for software-defined radio, this will work very well for you. In addition, some commercial shortwave users must keep watch over certain frequencies, and this is an inexpensive way to do it. And of course, governments and other agencies can use these for both SIGINT and COMMENT, and there is a note to that effect on the SDR Play website. The entire SDR Play lineup currently consists of three receivers. The RSP1A has a shielded plastic case and only two connectors. There is one antenna connection, which is a female SMA and one type B USB connector like you might find on an HP printer. The RSPDX has three antenna connectors selectable to female SMA and the female BNC. The manual notes that you should use the BNC connector only for frequencies under 200 megahertz and otherwise use the SMA connectors. This is uh, very handy. The RSP Duo is different from the other two in that it has two separate RF chains. The RF chain 1 has a choice between a 50 ohm SMA connector or a high impedance long wire connector, and the second tuner can be fed by a 50 ohm antenna through a female SMA connector. Let's look at prices. The entry-level RSP1A is available through HRO for about US $110 right now in December 2019. It's normally $120. I reviewed the RSP1A and asked Dave $115. The RSPDX, the new model, is available for about $200. If you have the money, I would go this route because the technology is newer and they've added some cool features that can be used on 160 meters, 630 meters, and 2,200 meters, those last two being our new ham bands. 
These new features include some special filters, broadcasting notch filters, better IMD performance, more attenuator settings, and a high dynamic range mode. So if you're interested in the low bands, this radio is of particular interest to you. Now I point out that the third radio in the series, the RSP Duo, which I reviewed in Ask Dave episode 132, is available right now for $220, only $20 more than the RSP DX, but its normal price is $280. So the question is, do you want the second receiver? You can have it for not much more money, at least during this holiday season, but you trade the new features that are available for the low bands. Personally, I have not used the RSP Duo except to demonstrate it and have found that the single threaded radio meets all my needs. In passing, if your use case experiments with diversity reception or a need to receive simultaneously on two widely separated bands, you'll need the RSP Duo. Now, which radio do I recommend? They're all nice and all work well. I do think it's a good idea to have one of these in your station connected in such a way that you can use it at a moment's notice. Mine is always connected to my computer and then antenna, so all I have to do is start the software and I have what I want. If $200 is pushing a little bit, go with the RSP1A. Otherwise, go with the RSPDX. If you think you'll do a lot of experimenting, for example, with diversity receiving, try the RSP Duo. So here you have lots of options. If you think you just like the receiver for your station and you can afford it, I think I would recommend the RSPDX. Please note that other than receiving the radios for review, I have no connection with SDR Play. I would also point out that you're going to have to spend some time with the software manual as there is no simple point and shoot mode with these radios. I'm used to it by now. Let me just show you how it works. I connect the MFJ antenna to the BNC connector on the RSPDX and the USB connector goes to my PC. I double click on the SDR Uno icon. The primary window for the software is not the big one, but rather the one marked Main. Click on Play. Click on Antenna C, which is the BNC connector. Click on 40 meters. You can now see the entire band starting at 7,000 kilohertz and going up to 7,300 kilohertz. These over here on the left are individual CW signals. This solid band right here are all the FT8 signals. There's a lot of activity there. In the center and on the right-hand side, you can see sideband signals. There are many, many features of the software. You will want to go to the SDR Play website and download the manual for SDR Uno version 1.33. Again, I recommend using the house brand software. It's free and fully featured. I point out that after you get the radio, you should go to the SDR Play website and click on the button that says Start Here. It will take you step by step through the processes of getting your radio up and functioning. And don't forget to check out some of the shortwave listening bands. You click on the Bands button and select the Broadcast button. The 49 meter band is often the most active, especially in the evening. Note that the signals on the 49 meter band are AM. Tune around a bit and have some fun. There's a lot more on HF than just ham radio. Well, I hope you found this useful. Any one of these black boxes make an excellent software defined receiver in conjunction with the house software. You can really get an awesome idea of what the spectrum looks like, and all the ham bands are pre-selected with just a single mouse click. There's so much to see. The new RSPDX features are aimed at the low bands. In addition to the new ham bands, there are navigation beacons, low frequency broadcasting from Europe, and many other strange and interesting signals. It's worth exploring. The new features of the RSPDX make this part of the band 
really shine. So, yes, I do recommend this radio. Again, it's only a receiver. If your only use case is to create a companion pan adapter for your HF radio, go with the RSP1A. But if you'd like to explore our new low band ham bands, you'll want the RSPDX for all of its special low band features. I hope you found this useful and I look forward to your comments. There are amazing things on the HF, VHF, UHF and microwave bands that bear exploring. It's nice to have a capable, modern, well thought through architecture designed explicitly for people like us who enjoy exploring. Let me know how you use your SDR Play receivers. If you would like to support this channel, then go to www.dkassler.com support for a menu of ways to do so. One of the easiest is to just throw a little something in the tip jar. You can find the tip jar on the support page or directly at www.ke0og.net slash tip hyphen jar. Thank you for your support. 2019 has been a great year. As the year draws to a close, I wish you all happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, happy new year, and the best during the holiday season. Until we next meet, 73.